Welcome back to CJ's Knits. Today I'm going to introduce you to the KG93E garter carriage. As we flip through the manual, you will see the outside of the garter carriage, how the adapter works, how it looks, how it plugs in, the prep work for oiling a needle, and the position of the yarn in the yarn holder. We're going to start by looking at the emergency shutoff for the garter carriage. This clicks into the small square on most of the tension rods available on standard machines. And this is how we load the yarn into this tension mast. You'll see how it loops into all of the usual places and then this little tiny lever. And then you just thread it the way you would normally. Here's a look at the back side and how I put the yarn through that little tension mast. This is how I use my garter carriage. I do, no, do not do an E-wrap cast on directly onto the cast on comb. I actually use my regular carriage first and then I will switch to the garter carriage and do an E-wrap onto waste yarn. Before you start your garter carriage, make sure that you review your manual and make sure that you have done all the steps and stages that you need to do. This manual is very overwhelming at first, but once you get it, you get it. All right, so we're just doing a quick review here. I want to make sure I have all of my settings in the right way. I'm going to be using the point cams. I got to make sure my tension's right. I have to make sure my machine is on when it needs to be on. All of that is important to review before you start knitting. And as soon as I'm done looking through the book, we're going to do the cast on comb. I put this in super speed so you don't have to sit here for four minutes watching me knit waste yarn. I am putting in a strand of contrast color because I accidentally grabbed the wrong yarn when I started this and I didn't want to be a quitter. So enjoy my folly. All right, that's all done. Time for the garter carriage. I know I need to put on my knit leader tripper. Now I'm going to review in the book again to make sure I have all my settings correct for the E-wrap cast on. As you can see in the manual, all of the levers go to the right, adjust my tension for my working tension. I'm going to show you how I put the yarn in. It's going to get, get caught on something stupid, and then I'm going to have to readjust it. And let's not forget to actually plug in your garter carriage. That's a big step. Turn on your machine. I just put in the river pattern. Your machine must be on for the E wrap cast on. There's your close up.
Make sure you put the Memo button on. My garter carriage does not like to turn off. And of course, I don't have the garter carriage quite on the machine. I'm going to make an adjustment. Like I said, my yarn likes to get caught in silly places, so I just reset the yarn. The yarn is secured. Row counters at one. One more check of the manual. You can see the G lamp is on. And the press go. All right, now that the row is done, this is what we get for our E-wrap cast on. We are now going to change to garter stitching and we're going to input a new pattern. We are using the settings from the manual. We have moved the garter carriage all the way to the left side of the turn mark. We're inputting our new pattern. And then we will be moving the garter carriage back towards the knitting. I also use this for our knit log. So you will see that I am putting in stitch markers at 21 left and 21 right. You'll understand if you do our knit along. I'm resetting the row counter to 000. zero, zero. And I will start the garter carriage to do the patterning. As you can see, I have it set to go turn around and around. I have the initial row set to go to the right. I'm putting in my edge markers. That way the last two stitches on either side of the pattern will not be knit in garter. I put this on super speed. The garter carriage takes a long time to do each row. I've tried to speed this up as much as I can so that you can actually see what I am doing, as well as not taking two hours to knit a couple rows. This is the machine stitching all the way back. You can see in super speed how it changes the patterning. My garter carriage um, does not turn off when I want it to, so I have to use the sensor. And my garter carriage does not keep the actual row count, so I have to keep a very close eye on that as well.
you can kind of see how the pattern is coming along. Okay, how about we do some ribbing now? After doing an E-wrap cast on, this is the pattern you are going to program in. I just did a 14 stitch sample. I again still use my edge markers. I did the E-wrap cast on using my garter carriage, making sure that I depress the Mimo button and turn it off before I start knitting. Okay, that is how long it takes to knit 14 stitches with my garter carriage. And now we're going to knit back the other way at 1.5 times the speed. At this point you can see how the ribbing is coming along nicely. We are at 18 rows. How about we learn how to cast off now? How do we cast off? First of all, you must turn off your machine. Otherwise you will not be casting off. I'm going to get my garter carriage back to the right hand side of the bed. This is where you start casting off from you will never be able to cast off from the left side of the bed. It will not hurt your knitting to have an extra row of knitting. Again, we will consult our book, and it shows that we need to place the stitch from the row beneath our cast off row onto the gate peg. I'm going to try my best to zoom in so that you can see how I grab that stitch and put it on the gate peg. Sometimes they're a little tough. It's okay if you grab the one even underneath that one. But try your best to grab the row that is directly underneath. If it comes undone, use your latch tool and fix it. Remove all of your weights. Make sure you don't have any clips hanging on to your work. You want zero weight on this work. You are going to set the first two levers 
to the right, but the other lever goes to the left. So the direction lever to the left, the other levers to the right. Make sure your machine is turned off, double check. Make sure you do not have your edge markers still in play. Remove those. You do not change your tension. Press go. You only have the row counter set for one. As you can see, my machine doesn't like to shut off. I use the sensor. You can see how it knit perfectly. You need to open up the bottom case, release your needle, and release the other brush from right in front of the gate pegs. You need to clip your yarn. I'm going to get a closer angle here, don't worry. Here I draw the yarn from the feeder. And now I'm going to work the yarn off the hook. You need to be very delicate that you do not bend your needle. And that's how easy it works. Relock in your needle, push the brush back up, close the case, and move your garter carriage out of your way. Because there is no weight on, on your work, you should not lose any stitches if they did not get caught by your cast off. I secure my end. It's not pretty, I will make it more pretty when I'm all done. That is how easy the cast off is. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but for increasing one stitch or decreasing one stitch, you just use the two prong or three prong transfer tool. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate multi-stitch reductions. You are going to, first of all, switch your garter carriage from multi-direction to single direction. You only need your single prong transfer tool for this one. When the garter carriage gets to where I need to do the reduction, I am going to start a gate peg bind off. I have sped up all of the boring parts yet again. Okay, I am moving the garter carriage out of my way. I'm using my single prong transfer tool. I put a loop in the needle. I use the single prong transfer tool to go behind the gate peg and onto the next stitch. I then pull the yarn through. Then I move my edge marker two stitches over and push your needles back. I then put one more row on my garter carriage and I press go.
Once the garter carriage has passed the stitches that are on gate peg, I then pull the stitches up off the gate pegs and let them hang freely. You'll see that in the next section of video. I'm going to demonstrate the gate peg bind off one more time. Behind the gate peg onto the next stitch, pull the yarn through. Behind the gate peg onto the next stitch, pull the yarn through. This time I go in front onto the next stitch. I then move my edge marker. Push all the needles back. As you can see, I don't have any needles absolutely forward. One row, press go. There I go, picking it up off the gate pegs. And that's how easy it is to do multi-stitch reductions. Can we do cables? Yes, but I did not demonstrate them. I will have to do a separate video just for cables. Join me next time for a dog sweater knit along. Bye!